the NFL Combine. Now, we've talked a little bit about this. We talked about it some last week. But the big story coming out of the Combine has been these 40 numbers. Uh, the speed at the NFL Combine this season has been off the charts. And I'll, I'll start off with, I guess, you know, maybe the biggest stories being the two defensive backs that kind of put an exclamation point on things on Sunday. Uh, Baylor cornerback Kalen Barnes and UTSA cornerback Tariq Woolen ran two of the fastest 40-yard 40 dash, uh, 40 dash times in the Combine's history. Barnes clocked in at 4.23. Uh, that was the fastest ever for a defensive back. It's considered the second fastest time to uh, wide receiver John Ross's 4.22 back in 2017. John Ross, the uh, Washington wide receiver. Barnes played 41 career games for the Bears. Uh, Woolen from UTSA ran a 4.26 and it ran his uh, his ran his best 40 on his second attempt. It's not just these guys, right? You're looking at some of these other times. And uh, so you pull it up over at, like, Pro Football Network. The the wide receiver times, uh, Tyquan Thornton from Baylor, 4.28. Uh, Velas Jones from Tennessee, a 4.31. Calvin Austin from Memphis, 4.32. Uh, Danny Gray ran a 4.33. Alec Pierce ran a 4.33 from SMU in Cincinnati. At, like, these times, and it's not just wide receivers or running backs or whatever. Uh, these guys are insane. Like, the, the offensive lineman, Dare Rosenthal. Uh, from Kentucky, that transferred from LSU, ran a four eight eight. This guy weighs like three hundred and thirty pounds. I mean, this is these numbers are astronomical. Uh, Devontae Wyatt from Georgia ran a four seven seven defensive tackle. Jordan Davis, everybody knows how big he is, ran a four seven eight. Chris, what in the world is going on with these times? Like, have they figured out a way to rig the system, or are we just going to see faster and faster guys every single year? when they start measuring this stuff out. So there's a part of me that I I wonder I wonder is there is there chicanery going on? Is there any type of fuckery at all with the with the clocks? Because for us to have just like a complete and utter record at every position uh at forty times just just doesn't seem right. And what is kind of been seen the entire year as a very down and disappointing draft class. And do you have do you have fuckery like that, like we're talking about, um, and uh, and end up um, to, to try to boost the draft, to try to boost the interest in the draft, to try to boost the ratings in the draft, uh, something of that nature. That's that's my only thought. That's my only question about this because this doesn't seem normal or natural not that these guys can't fly not that these guys aren't just crazy fast but the the idea that almost every position group has set the record this year for their position group i mean as far as safeties go we've got six guys that ran a sub four four like that is that's crazy to me uh on top of that as far as linebackers i mean we're, we're looking now, cornerbacks, you've got like 15 guys that ran a sub-4-5, which is pretty typical. Uh, linebackers, you've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, uh, four guys that ran a sub-4-5. I mean, you don't see this. Like, these numbers are not – they can't be that's, real. That's what I'm saying. The, the fact that it's at almost every position group, if it, if it was just one position group, it would be one thing. But the, the idea that it's – it's offensive linemen are setting the record for offensive linemen. The 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 you know DBs are setting the record for the DBs. The receivers, the the linebackers, the DNs. Every position group is setting the record for their position group this year. What what are the chances of that? Because this is not the deepest or most talented draft class we've ever had. It's, no, I mean it's actually kind of widely seen as a very disappointing draft class overall. Oh yeah, the, compared uh, the, to the last couple of years, the fastest edge rusher. Uh, Amari Barno from Virginia Tech ran a four three six. He's an edge rusher. He ran a four three six. Yeah, yeah. That, so, but so that's what I'm saying. But I, I will tell you this: you're talking to a guy that is commonly seen as a conspiracy theorist. I don't trust things that all seem out of sorts. And so the fact that every number is inflated to a gross dimension, it tells me that there's some fuckery with with the way they're keeping dimes now. That's that's all. That's 
that's the only that's the only thing that I can attribute it to is I don't trust the number that they're getting. I yeah. don't think it's right. I don't think it's accurate. And I think somebody, somebody has done something to the call. I'm just, it, it, I will tell you this one. So tight end, uh, Grant Calcaterra from SMU had the number three 40 time. He ran a 4.62. And I have watched Grant Calcaterra many, many times. I've watched SMU a lot when I was watching Sonny Dykes' yeah. offense. I was just about to say, we, I, I, bet, I bet outside of SMU fans, we may have watched more SMU football over the oh, last yeah. two or three years than anybody on the planet. Oh, for sure. I, because we always knew when to bet on them, when to bet against them, all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, well, we, and, we, and we both follow and love Sonny Dykes. Yes, yes. Grant Calcaterra is not a 4-6-2 guy. Like, no. he's not. I just, he's I, never played that fast in his life. So the idea that he would all of a sudden get in his underwear and run that much faster than everybody else just doesn't make any sense. That's, that's why I don't believe it. I, I am a skeptic at heart. I kind of hate that about myself. But I just, I am. I'm jaded to a point where I've seen too many things that, that if they look too good to be true, they ain't. Okay? That's just it. Hey, uh, just just guessing, uh, what would you think David Bell's 40 time was from Purdue? Oh, oh well, see, now that's one guy that I think is faster than Lightning. I have no idea, though, man. I, I wouldn't even know what to tell you. I don't know. See, four, see four, this is what surprises me. Know, he four, had, three, he four, had the, no, no, he had the fourth that's slowest. He ran a four six five, and yet was to me uh, the best wide receiver in the Big Ten this year. And maybe yeah, outside no, of the guys and, at Ohio State. And he but, also, and I think I also think he plays fast. I also yeah. think he plays faster than most of these other guys. Now he's going to hurt in a forty time, okay? And why is that? Because he doesn't have the long legs. He doesn't have the stride that these other receivers are going to have. He just doesn't. That at some point in time, physics is going to come into play, and you could make faster strokes than Michael Phelps, but if you don't have a 10-foot wingspan, then then you ain't beating Michael Phelps. Like, that's just it. No, you're you're 100% right there. 100% right. Yeah, it just it felt like there's, like you said, some chicanery going on with that because it, it, these guys, I mean, these numbers are it's just every position insane. Group. It's yeah. every position group. Science isn't that damn good. This isn't how science works, by the way. Like, no. you don't have normalcy for a hundred years of doing something, and then one year in what is seen as a mediocre draft class, all of a sudden all of these guys are now super freak athletes. Like, they're freakier athletes than we've ever seen in the hundred years of doing this. That doesn't make sense. That doesn't add up. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.